Hi everybody, and welcome to Sit and Knit for a Bit with Arne and Carlos, a weekly podcast, and we are, as always, your hosts, Arne and Carlos. And today we are actually doing it a little bit differently than what we normally do. Yeah, we actually be, we haven't filmed in this room before, and <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago we posted a video where we said we should, we had to redecorate our drawing room because the fireplace was bad. We had to. Well, we weren't we gonna we weren't gonna redecorate. We're gonna re renovate it because of some issues yeah. with the fireplace and the. But then, floor. I, but then Arna said, "Let's redecorate." And I don't know, Carlos, do you think we went too far? <clears throat> I think we went too far. I mean, I love the gilded walls and I love the chandelier and I love the the painting on the walls as well. But I and think we mirrors. went way too far. Maybe we have to tone it down a little bit. I don't know. We're just kidding. We are actually in Trondheim. And that is why uh, this podcast is slightly different than uh, usual, because we're not filming at home. Where we usually do it on, with our own camera in the comfort of our own living room. However, we usually record Sit and Knit for a bit a few days before Wednesday. Yeah. Usually Mondays is the go-to day for recording, and then in case something goes wrong, we can re-record it on Tuesday. But by Tuesday, we do need to have it all done. Yeah. And because uh, we are still in Trondheim, we found uh, we figured that the best way to uh, to do this was if we just did it here. Mm -hmm. And we actually we came with car and we're going down tomorrow, so we have to do it today. And you're probably wondering, where exactly in Trondheim are we? Um, we're staying at the Hotel Britannia. It's the grand old dam of the city of Trondheim. Um, it's been here for 151 years. It was redecorated and completely renovated in 2019. And it has become the heart of the city. It's a beautiful hotel. Uh, we have been very well taken care of here. The staff is yeah. lovely. And they actually said we could use this beautiful room for the podcast. Yeah, usually, is... usually this room is a, a Michelin-starred restaurant, but it's closed today, and uh, they let us uh, hang out here with you guys. So we're hanging out in a Michelin restaurant. And this is the first time we actually have a lot of people passing by because there's a breakfast room on that side, and yeah. you probably hear uh, some piano music because there's a guy playing a piano. So it's. Very stylish. Yeah, it's a bit unusual uh, <laughs> for unusual. us, but it's nice. I mean, sometimes we do need a change of scenery, and that is what we got now. Now, of course, when Arne and I go somewhere, uh, we redecorate anyway. And as you can see, we've got we, a lot of crafty stuff yeah, here. We moved in. <laughs> yeah, we've kind of moved in with all our crafts. Um, yeah, and we've been doing these granny squares in our uh, spare time that we'll talk about a little later. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the but background. I think they did a really good job here because this is kind of taken care or renovated in like the old style. Mm. You can still see that this is an old hotel. And yeah. I think that's nice. Yeah, that's what we like. Yeah. But we have been in Trondheim working and we have some secret. We have some secrets. It's very, it's kind of, it's, yeah, well. it's not out there yet, but some of you probably have read somewhere on, on the internet that we've been out and about yeah. but we're not going to say much because this we're still it's still in progress yeah you know the world is small and uh, we ca we couldn't come here to Trondheim for what we're doing unnoticed so it has been noticed um, but we don't want to talk about it too much because we want it to be a delightful surprise later in the year um, and now if you were there yesterday, please don't spoil it for the other people by don't putting it too much. putting it in the comments. And I know that some, you know, there are some people, I'm like that. <laughs> if you tell me, <laughs> if you tell me I bought you a gift yeah. and I've hidden it somewhere, I'm gonna look for that gift everywhere when Arne is not looking well, around. You, like you start to tell me what it is when I open it. Yeah, exactly. You so, even do that like with other people. I remember on Christmas Eve, we had gifts for our friends and then you started to explain what it was in the before, package. Yeah, and I before said, they opened. Please don't, please don't say it. It has yeah. to be a surprise. I'm really bad with spoilers <laughs> and I'm sure there are other people like me around. And uh, yeah, go ahead, try to look for the information. You'll probably find it around in Instagram or probably on a blog somewhere. If you want the spoiler, go ahead. If you know what it is, please don't spoil it for the others. And if you can, um, you know, if you can uh, look, you know, if you want to wait and look forward to something, then I think we're going to, you know, it's going to be a fun treat uh, when, when we finally um, come out. Mm -hmm. 
and tell everybody what we're doing here in Trondheim. But then, Carlos, whatever, what have happened this week? Well, for one, we're not traveling with Turid, our plant. No, she's uh, not with us. No, we didn't, you know, she, the begonia needs a lot of water and uh, we just couldn't take her. Um, we've got a little, yeah, okay, let's put this here in front of us. We've got a little bouquet here of uh, a rose, a little rose with a little bit of a, a thing happening there. Um, she's uh, substituting or standing in for Turid yeah. today. Um, yeah, and we've had quite an eventful week. It's the first time that we've actually done something in a place and it actually, you know, it's kind of after the pandemic, although the pandemic is not over yet. It does feel post pandemic here in Trondheim. Yeah, because we're out now, we're out with people and it's very special because like where we live, you have to wear masks if you go into like the grocery store or the gas station mm. or like in public places, but you don't wear, wear a mask when you're outdoors. But in Trondheim, it seems like people are very good at using their masks and they have no, yeah. there's no, uh, no new cases. New cases. Yeah, it's incredible. So we, we are now uh, currently in the only place in Europe that is green in the sense that, or the only city in Europe that is green, in the sense that there is no new cases of COVID here in Trondheim, and we can walk around feeling safe. We wear our masks yeah. uh, wherever, whenever we are outside. We wear our masks whenever we go into places. So for example, when we went to the restaurant yesterday, when we walked in, we put our masks on, and then when we sat down, we took them off. And because people have been so good in this city, uh, there's no new cases. No. Now, what's interesting about that is that Trondheim is a city which uh, has a big uh, student population because there's a university here. Yeah. So. And there's also very rich cultural life. But and what? We have that old cathedral, which is so beautiful. Yeah. Well, we haven't been around much yet. But. No, we haven't. But everything here is kind of normal. The hotel yeah. is hosting a very famous um, artist who is doing his uh, concert here uh, while people are having dinner. Yeah. Uh, the hotel has been fully booked. The entire weekend it's been full here yeah. um, I, now I don't know what full means in COVID times I'm sure that they're not allowed to book out the entire hotel I'm sure there's a limitation mm. as to how many people but probably within the rules and regulations it was booked out it felt more like it's going back to normal here. yeah so that's nice yeah and it feels you know what it feels a little bit like a taste of what's coming <laughs> yeah. once things <laughs> do go back to normal so that's nice and then this is the first time we are away from Helmer because yes. we left him and it's strange. It's like we are leaving a kid at home yeah. and we don't know actually, we're not so sure how we behave because he's so attached to us now and yeah, we, we prepared, some news. Yeah, we prepared quite a lot for our trip. Um, as you, you know, if you, if you saw our last episode, we were telling you how we decided not to, not to drive him to the place where, we were gonna, where he was going to stay because we didn't f want him to feel like he was gonna, being abandoned. So the p person who's uh, keeping him right now came and picked him up and all of that. So we tried to give it a little bit of normality. However, um, we have a very <laughs> smart dog. Um, he could probably get a role in uh, Tom Cruise's next yeah. Mission Impossible movie. Probably. <laughs> because he's very, very smart and it has been creating some problems. Um, in the end, we decided that we don't want to know anymore. We'll, 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 talk it, we'll talk with our friend later when we get back. But yeah, it was, um, I did make the mistake of asking how things were going and um, uh, that was... So do you want to start? Yeah. Actually, she left her house because she was going to work. No, I think we should start uh, before that. So well, we, so, so we left Helmer um, at home and kind of went out because we wanted it to be a smooth transition. Oh yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, that so, we, so we went out uh, of the house and we left. Um, and then the idea was that, that an hour later um, our friend would come and pick him up and Freya. That way it would be like quite normal because it would just be us kind of going to the grocery store, which mm. he's used to. Yeah. So we leave the house and then um, about an hour, because we drove to Trondheim, about an hour in, she called. She called because she had problem like closing the door and that like... And we, then the alarm. And the, uh, the alarm. Uh, I think we were like on the phone for like five minutes or mm -mm. Not, not that much, two minutes. And then you hang on the phone and then she called or she sent the picture because Helmer managed to bite 
of the harness. the harness while he was waiting for her. That took him only two minutes. Yeah, and now here's the funny thing. The harness that we have to put a, we have to put a special harness on Helmer and that harness has a safety belt. So it's a very complicated thing to put on. I still haven't learned. You usually do it. Yeah. It takes time every time. It's like, it's really difficult. Yeah, and so we told her that, um, you know, we couldn't put the harness on him when we left because he would take it off. Mm. Um, so she would have to learn how to do it. Now, in order for her to learn how to do it, um, we spend about half an hour, um, you know, putting it on, taking it off, putting it, so she, she had to practice. She had to take pictures of the different, because there's different belts that you click in and click in and do this and that. I don't even know, you know it more than me. But anyway, she spent, she spent half an hour to 40 minutes learning this, and then uh, puts it on Helmer, turns around to make a call, and by the time she finishes the call, she, he has taken it off. And it's the second time you do it, actually. Yeah. He bites off a piece. He bit it first off. First time he got it. And I think it's because I think he came into a, a new car, a strange car, and I think he got stressed a little bit. Yeah, he and probably did. He wanted did. to be with her because he's so attached to people. So that was the first one. Yeah, so she said, so she said, the harness is broken. What do I do? And then we say, in Norway, it's illegal for the dog to be loose. In, in the, the car. car if you don't have one of those cars with five doors so you have you know that door in the back which also has windows if, if and if you don't have a net there it's illegal to put the dog there and you can't have the dog in the back seat because unless he has a safety belt on so we told her either you go and buy a harness and picking up pick him up again or you have to figure out how to fix the harness and she fixed it five minutes later she writes I fixed it so that's great. So we're thinking, yeah. we're thinking. Okay, so Helmer can go now. So she fixes the harness and she's able to um, put it on the safety belt. Uh, but apparently, uh, Helmer has also figured out how to push the button of the safety belt to release himself from yeah. the harness or from the from the attachment in the car. In, in the, the car. Yeah. So suddenly he was loose there, and she had to stop the car and click it back on. And then it was the next morning. That's. That's when she left. Well, the her next house morning for for her job. Yeah, the next morning I made she, a new mistake. I, I I texted to ask how it was going. Yeah, and we, actually, we forgot to tell her something also because we she she went to work and then she had forgotten her keys. So she go went back to her house and then she, when she came to the house, Helmut was coming running towards her. He was yeah. outside and because. We forgot to tell her that Helmut is actually mad. He can open doors. Yeah, he can open our door because we have a we have a electronic door with uh, codes. So you have to you have to type a code and then you and then it clicks and you can open that. So he can open that. But if the door does not have codes, he can open it. Hmm. She says she swears the door was locked, and we can believe her. I think it was. It must have been locked yeah. because he know actually the people who had him before also told us that he know how to open doors and mm. we just forgot about it because he couldn't open the door in our house yeah. and now he's like Helmer Houdini yeah we he, call him Houdini now <laughs> because he can get away as he can I get said, away from everything as I said he probably knows how to turn off the alarm as well probably. and he could probably work for Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible he could. in the next movie yeah, yeah so that's so, the drama this week yeah she says that uh, he's very so uh, he did sleep very well uh, Freya is there, of course, but she says that he follows them everywhere. And if they go to the toilet and shut the door and close the toilet, he barks. <laughs> we have to train him. We have to find out yeah. how can we train him because yeah, he likes to be where you are. So yeah. it's a bit annoying sometimes, especially we, in the bathroom. We definitely <laughs> need to train him to be a little bit more independent. Yeah. Right now, this is a problem. And this is the first time we travel and we still don't know what's gonna happen, you know, when we really start traveling. But then we found this really good, it's like a podcast on Norwegian, the national TV mm, Norway. Yeah, with Maren. Maren, she's like really good with dogs. She's like a dog whisperer. Yeah, so we were listening to some of these podcasts and you know the dogs are, both of them are barking every time they hear something or they see a well, moose. Or, every time they see a moose. Yeah, and there was like some tips how to stop the barking mm -hmm. and now that's what we work on now so we have to get through that first i think and then we should try the independence 
something. Yeah. Independence. You see, uh, <laughs> the thing is, uh, the poodle is one of the most intelligent of dogs, and um, it's turning out to be our downfall <laughs> because he really is uh, quite smart and he can figure out a lot of things, um, which is a bad thing right now because he's so very little independent. However, because he is such an, a smart dog, he should be easy to train, don't you think? I mean, already now we're training yeah. him to do different things and he learns very he learns quickly. very quick, so. He's very eager. Yeah. But he's a, he's a really yeah. good dog. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we have treats in our pockets and then we forget um, mm. that they're there. And then when we, when we get back home or when we go downstairs, because you know, COVID times, not wearing very many pants. Um, suddenly we see the pants in the middle of the kitchen floor and then the pocket is all wet. You know, this is and actually the first days in many, many months that we're actually wearing pants every day. Yeah, we've, we've been wearing pants that. every day. We've been yeah. wearing pants. Yeah. Even now we have pants. Yeah, I managed to get my, uh, <laughs> my, my, my pants with the elastic waistband uh, washed. <laughs> Um, I'm squeezing into the jeans. Um, they're still a little bit tight. I don't know what happened in the in the uh, closet. Some people say that there's this little bug called calorie, uh, I think and it goes into it goes into the um, the closet. Yeah, the, it goes into the closet and it sews your pants in in the middle of the night. I think that that is very likely. <laughs> we what have happened. people looking. <laughs> yeah, some people are interested in looking at what we're what doing. What are they doing? Yeah, and they're all wearing masks, so we, we, we can't really see their faces. Maybe we should their put eyes. on the mask also, to hide behind the mask. Yeah, maybe we should do yeah. that. So this is a different set than it for a bit. Yeah, and we're wearing pants, yeah. because we need to get out of this, the, this hall of mirrors and go back to our room, and we can't do that without pants. How, do, how does it feel? How does it feel wearing pants? Warm. I'm interviewing you now. Warm and very tight. Okay. Can you ask me? How does... How does it feel wearing trousers? Odd and liberating, actually. Liberating? Yes, what I feel wearing? liberated. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm wearing pants. <laughs> but they have an elastic weight, yeah, waistband. Waist and, the other, and yesterday it was so cold um, because the weather here is extremely unpredictable. Oh, it's changing so quick. We had and, everything in And morning. yesterday it was so cold and, you know, I'm, I'm wearing these. They've got a little elastic band on the waist and they're a little loose. And they're made of wool, like wool and acrylic blend, I think it is, or cotton and wool, I don't know. But anyway, um, there was a, there's a wind here that we don't have where we live. And um, yeah, wearing those pants uh, outdoors actually felt like I wasn't wearing any pants at all. So that's what I mean with liberating, because yeah. it felt like everything was just, you know, free. Yeah. I mean, free in the sense of, you know... And we didn't bring the long johns either because we thought it should be warmer here because it's not so high up in the mountains and it's closer to the fjords, but we didn't think about the wind. No, I mean, yesterday, so yesterday we did a little something outdoors. We, were, we experienced in, the, you know, in, a, in a matter of five minutes, sun, uh, rain, uh, snow, horizontally, wind, and then sun again. And that was like five minutes of our, our, yeah. our thing. So it's not, never boring. It's never boring, absolutely not. And of course, like when we travel, we had to fill the car with unfinished objects because we we needed to have something with us, like mm -hmm. in the room. Because yeah. if you end up in the hotel room or you never know, it's nice to have something. And we brought all these crochet squares, or yeah. blocks, or what you call it, for the new blanket we're working mm -hmm. on. We actually made made like a kids or a baby blanket. But we, we did, yes. We have so much left over yarn, and so the baby blanket we're going to convert it into a, a, a throw, bigger. a big, a big throw. And I think we have enough of them now. I've sewn mm, it yeah, yeah, we've all got quite the a tails, few here. and I've done some calculations, mm. and I think we have enough. So, and they're stacked up in our hotel room. We have them all, all it's in actually stacks, nice. and when it looks they are like in pipes. Like yeah, this. it looks really, really beautiful to have them like this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's an enjoyable thing. This is a really nice uh, on-the-go project. And the blanket is still not very big, so we are able to travel with it. Um, you know, we're very optimistic. We thought we should do a lot of things, but we managed to sew in the loose ends, but we haven't managed to attach more of these. Yeah. But here we've got the blanket um, with the mini granny square. And there's another piece I started to this. crochet together. So this will be the width of the new one mm -hmm. so yeah like this so 
Then we just take off the edge on the baby blanket and we crochet that together with yeah. this one. And then we continue with this. So I think we should do a video of how we arrange this. We that should, could be very colorful and nice. We should definitely do a video, yeah. On but a anyway, day when we come home. Yeah. But anyway, here is the here is the blanket. We've shown these granny squares before. People love them. And they love them so much that we decided to put out a pattern. The pattern is available at arnacarlos.com. And um, if you are a newsletter subscriber, you will get the discount. Uh, but when you receive the newsletter, if you want to be on the on the um, newsletter to get the discount, you have to go there now. The pattern is going to be released uh, in a couple of days, and yeah, it's you want to e make sure easy, easy piece or easy square. To yeah, crochet. it's kind of like it's a miniature. Not... It's a miniature granny square. Um, it's really fun to make. Uh, and you get to, you know, make your own color choices for this, mm. which are a lot of fun to do. I love this one, a little Lorna. bit together in the center, so it's more like a little flower in the center. Mm. These are definitely my colors. You've yeah. got the gray, and then you've got a, like a lime green, a pink, and then a blue in the middle. But you know, not much happened with the leftover yarns. I there's, know. It's, it shrinked a little bit, but there's still so much. Mm. I finished this one. This is the leftover yarn. Yeah. We could do one more, maybe one for you, because this is shorter. Because yeah, I'm it's so, too short for me. My upper body is shorter, so I like to have them shorter. Mm. So, I don't know. I think we can crochet and knit forever and there won't happen. Nothing will happen in the leftover yarn stash. It looks like that, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's good for us. That means we have more yarn to knit and crochet with in the future. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so this is the blanket. Uh, the baby blanket is done. It's going to become a larger blanket. We've got the pattern for you out already. And um, stash busting, that's yeah. what it's all about. And usually this time of the year, a lot of our, our, um, our viewers, uh, they will go into crochet mode. Because I think... It's like a spring-summer thing yeah. for a lot of people. And then, of course, we have all the viewers that are knitters that are not crocheters that say that they don't crochet. But, um, mm. you know, with a project like this, it's actually easy to learn. This is a fairly easy uh, granny square. Yeah. And then the edging is also nice because yeah. it's crocheted together. So it's quite a nice project to do. It's we can guarantee nice. it. And this looks, looks quite nice when the small squares, mm. I think, is nice. And I love the colors. I think yeah. the colors are really, really fabulous. So, so we, fi we, we have finished the t tails, but we haven't finished the blanket. Mm. So we are very optimistic when we travel. And then we also brought this one, and we haven't touched it, because this is another leftover yarn project that we're working on. Yeah. So we make those scarves we talked about before, where you knit the whole length, yeah. and you Can cut I? the yarn, and you make a knot. Yeah, and a lot of people, we were looking at the comments, a lot of people were wondering how you could get such a long scarf um, on the needle and it's very easy you use the long the, the longest circular needle this is an 80 centimeter circular needle needle it's the longest one you can, you can get, get on the a market lot of stitches. and mm. and it you know when you're knitting it it doesn't have to the scarf doesn't have to stretch out so you can you see you can get like a really long scarf yeah. inside a really small or a, or a fairly short needle so um, and then what you do, you're not knitting it on the round, you're knitting and you're stopping and then you're turning and you're knitting and you're stopping and you're turning yeah. and creating the fringe. And we all, always turn so we ha don't have the pearls, like all the pearl things or the back side is always like that and mm. there's a knit side. So we have to have we turn so we don't get a mix of these two. Yeah. This, we think it's nicer to have one that looks like it's the front and one that looks like it's the back. Yeah, and the fringe, we're creating the fringe uh, as it is. So it comes, um, the fringe comes uh, for each, as we showed on the video. Yeah. Um, there's a video tutorial we did recently. I think we won't do much with this one while we're in Trollheim. No, we no, the, no, because this is more fun this took, right now. Yeah, Although this, this is fun. fun, this is more fun. So I also brought the, the, the knitted doll, the small one with the, um, that I said I will make like eyes in the, uh, needle felt thing. Mm. I brought it, you can see it one more time. And I started, but I haven't finished it. I just made one eye. Can you see? You take a close up. See, that is what I'm working on the needle felted eye. And it's like this before I start working mm. on it. But I added some black. And I think it's a little bit too hard. I wanted to make like. Well, that. it looks like she's got a smoky eye. She has a smoky eye. 
I mean, that's, I think that's a makeup thing. But I think like I will make... I Do you know what a smoky eye is? It's more like, like a shadow. When you or... put a lot of brown, black around your eye, that's a smoky eye. So she has a smoky eye. But mm -hmm. I was thinking like if I find more of this yarn, this color, I can do use the carder mm -hmm. and make like new wool of the yarn and uh, add that around the eye mm. to have it a little bit more lighter because it, it, it came out quite kind of heavy when you have too much black there. Yeah, she's so, she's cute. so cute. She's the little, um, um, do you remember that doll in the, was it in the 70s? Chodervan. Chodervan, yeah, I remember. My, my mother took me to Lillehammer and bought me a Chodervan doll and my sister had the doll with black hair and I got the one with blonde hair because I wanted my Chodervan to look like Agneta from Abba. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. You now, probably played Abba with the dolls. Now you always, yeah, you love dolls and um, you're always, well, you've told me this story many times, so why don't you tell our viewers exactly why your mom bought you a Chodervan doll? Because I was making clothes for the doll, but I used my sister's doll, so she never could have her doll, because I always had her. I was making garments, like sewing garments, mm. sewing garment. I was knitting for her, and I never played with them, with the doll. But I don't understand, I, I mean, I mean, uh, if I were your sister and you were making, you know, like tons of clothes for my doll, I would be quite happy. I'd just take the clothes but and say thank you. But she never got the doll, the clothes. What happened to the clothes? I kept the clothes. Oh, okay. So you, okay, you didn't share with her. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's that's uh, sisters and sibling love, isn't yeah, but it? You know, that was I spent so much time doing those garments and I couldn't give them away. I wonder where they are. Yeah, that would be fun if you could find them. Maybe they're up in the attic somewhere. Yeah, or maybe some thrift store has them because somebody sent them in, you know. No, because I never left the house. Are you sure? I'm sure. They're, they're, if, if they're still around there, it's probably up in the attic. Okay, so we have some, uh, we have some uh, treasure hunting to do in your yeah. family attic and see if we can find the clothes you made for Chorven. In the worst case, could it could be that they were thrown away when they cleaned or something. Yeah. Do you think uh, they will fit this lady? No. But she has the same height, actually. She does? Yeah. Looks more like the Chodron doll. Okay. But I think the head is a little bit bigger. Yeah. And she's... the body is a little bit bigger. Mm. You have to make more clothes for her. Actually, what I was thinking, like for Christmas, she could also be nice, like a, a little Miss uh, Lady. Oh yeah, you then, know the Nisse is the little uh, Christmas elf yeah. that we it have. Could be like, like, she could be like the Nisse lady and then you could do a Nisse, a man with like mm. the beard and everything. You could have like a big pointy hat yeah, and put in, them in, the, in red. In the, in the barn that we don't have. No, in the drawing room when it's finished <laughs> for Christmas. Or mm. So the other day we were discussing how, how things develop here with us. Arne, Arne keeps showing all these fabulous things that he makes and then People want the pattern, and then you don't have it uh, because you never thought it would. It should be a pattern. Mm -hmm. So what's up with Chorven? I have written the pattern. You for, have for, for the doll. I, oh, I wow. even made it in English and also for the sweater. So I have have a pattern, but we. I think we should. First, we have to help get someone who can check it. Yeah. Things. So you plan on releasing this pattern if you want it. We can do yeah, that. I love. I'd love to knit Chorven. Yeah. and I. I I'm no, she's Valentina. Well, this is not Chorven. This is for you. Valentina. She's Valentina. <laughs> to me, she's Chorven, uh, because she really reminds, reminds you me about of that yeah. doll. So um, we so, can put the pattern up, but not tomorrow. No, no, definitely not tomorrow. But if you do want the pattern for the doll, please put it in the uh, comments below, so that we know. Um, we'd really like to know if you want to have uh, Chorven as a doll. But for, so for now, she has only one sweater. Yeah. But, but knowing you, she'll get a fabulous wardrobe eventually. She will have a nice wardrobe. Yeah, she's it's very so sweet. Cute. I like her a lot. Yeah. She's and super cute. And I like cute. the... I actually take the, the mouth away because I did duplicate stitch. I'm going to make that also with needle felting. So I, I have a little bit of work to do. Mm. You can even do eyebrows in needle felting. Yeah. It's kind of funny because you get the certain shape to the face. Mm. It's a great so, idea, really. But I haven't done, I haven't done anything with her since we came here because this took, like, 
a lot of time every evening in the hotel room we were working on on the mm. tales um, yeah. but you know it's better to have a lot of things with you than mm. too little yeah so so let's go back to the scarf because I wanted to talk a little bit about the colors mm -hmm. the color choices um, and, and then you pulled out Chorben, which is fine, because we really wanted to talk about her. I know, I go too quick all the time. Sometimes, yeah, you, you, you're, you're kind of like in a hurry, but maybe that's because you want to go back to the room and, and finish these babies here. They're finished. No, but I mean the blanket. Yeah, because I brought all the blue yarn also. Yeah, that's what I mean. You want, to finish, you want to finish joining it, that's why you're in a hurry. But our viewers would probably be very disappointed if we just left after, you know, two minutes or I'm one minute. I'm not going anywhere. I yeah, no, not until our five minutes are up, or sorry, our 15 minutes. <laughs> 15, 15 minutes. Um, anyway, we've got some um, delicious colors here. I have to say, I love them a lot. Um, the colors here are, there's a beige, and then there's a kind of like a sea green, maybe you mm -hmm. could call it. Then there's a marine blue, there's white, there's pink, there's red. Can you see there's like marine blue and black? Yeah. Because yeah, that was out of the Yeah, but window. that's only up here. Yeah. And then you've got the white and the navy blue, and then you've got the, um, the black again, the green, the beige, the pink. Yeah. It's a nice, nice color colorway, and I love the red. Mm. I love the red. The red really makes it pop, and then the blue and the black. And, yeah. It's actually really fun to do this. Yeah. So. Well, a lot of our viewers have asked us often, Arne, how do we put colors together, um, and if we could ever teach that. And that is actually one of the few things that I think is very difficult to teach. How we put, yeah, because we don't have a plan. We actually, we just pick a color and we knit and we see what happens. So what we do, we actually, we, we work our Well, way. if we don't like it, we take it out. Yeah, and we work our way into the center of the scarf and see what happens. And if it looks good, we copy it on the other half. Yeah, for the scarf, so, yeah. Yeah, for the it's, scarf. Um, we and like this is also, we just pull one yarn out. Yeah, that's very random, yeah. yeah. Now, we like the idea of, um, we, we like, we don't, oh sorry, we don't like the idea of spending too much time putting things together. We can quickly see if they go together, and if they go together, we'll, we'll put them, mm -hmm. and if we see that they don't go together, we'll take them out. Now, when we work with um, design, when we work with Rowan, and when we color in our reggae yarns, we usually um, that's more work. work on paper, and yeah. it's more theoretical. Um, but I think that for us, uh, color coordination or putting colors together is very difficult to teach because it's something that we do very instinctively yeah. it kind of it kind of comes um, from inside and you can't really teach those things because that is just part of what you are and who you are mm. and how you kind of react to, to colors. Like, like when I was knitting this leftover sweater there wasn't actually a plan either I just I made the drawing of the pattern and I, I don't have a pattern for the sweater because I cast it on as many stitches as I think is good for me and it worked. So there's like um, logic there, like I know how many stitches I need for the body and then mm. I find out as I go how many stitches I need for the sleeves. Mm. But the, and the pattern I just make the report yeah. and then I, I knit from that. And, mm. But the colors then is more like, this is leftover yarn. And yeah. when you do something like this, it's always fun also to see how the colors look together. Yeah. So then you really don't have a plan. But it's exactly. different, like when we do collections, we have more plans actually. Yeah. Um, but we would like to recommend to you, um, if you're putting colors together from your stash, think of it as you bought the yarn because you like the colors. And if you like the colors and you put them together, they should work because they're colors you love. Mm. So don't be too preoccupied with whether they go well together or they don't. Just look at it, you know, yeah. put it together, see if you like see it. And if you don't happens. like it, it can always be taken out and then you can always add a second one. But don't spend too much mm. time and trying to figure it out in your head because mm. if you do that, it will, it will hinder you. It will make you less confident. And, and we feel that people should be more confident with, mm. with color choices and letting your instincts kind of Kind of design, decide, and design for you is, mm. is a good way. Actually, I started a new leftover sweater last week, and I had to take out like almost 10 centimeters because the colors was not good together. Mm. But that's not the problem. It's so easy. 
to unravel. It's the, it's the jacket we talked about yeah. that you said we should show one day. Oh, we will. The one that I retired because it's so worn out. Mm. But now I'm not sure if I want to retire it no, like 100%. We could, we could fix it. I think I, I won't cut out the piece and keep the piece. I keep the whole jacket. Yeah, let's there. repair it instead. Or and we put it mm. somewhere in the stash. Yeah. And then when we work with design and we kind of deliver for Rowan and we're picking colors and putting colors together, I think we think a lot about um, how how the colors work in that particular time, mm. you know what I mean? Because we're not really, um, we're not, I mean, we're bo actually we're bombarded all the time, you know, with, with things, you know, we go to museum, not now because of COVID, but we usually went, you know, we go to museum exhibitions and we travel and we watch TV and, and TV shows and Instagram and we're constantly bombarded with a lot of information, with a lot of information and a lot of visual stuff, you know, you know, it's coming and coming and coming like that all the time. And I think that our subconscious is um, kind of working on that mm. and kind of trying to digest everything that we see and experience. So at one given time, um, when we put two colors together, we might experience it as something that really works or mm. something that doesn't work. It depends on the time yeah. uh, frame. So I think we're very, very um, influenced from what's going on now when we kind of I make think, yeah. certain kinds of decisions. It's of the moment and it's instinctive, but there is some kind of a subconscious um, reasoning behind mm. it. That's what I feel. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and as I said, it's difficult to teach colors together. You either put them together in a way that you like them, or you put them together in a way that you don't like them. If you don't like you them, know, like you just when, redo it again. Mm, but like when I grew up, like years ago, there was like the, like a common thing, like everybody agreed on that you should never like pink and red was like a big no-no. Oh, you mean like here? Yeah. But now I think that's nice. I I, I think it's really nice with pink and red mm. together. But that was, when I grew up, that was something you shouldn't do in a way. Mm. No. So yeah. I think this, these things are actually changing, and it depends on what you like. It pretend pretends on like what you look good in also which color you can wear like yeah well i can't wear mustard yellow <laughs> you can't <laughs> no i try let me see no i disappear let me see that's no well, this is even worse this is like more mm. I, I have no, a little you... bit no i haven't you know what I'm... they say in norwegian huh? alt clad and sweet yeah yeah how do we translate that everything Everything looks, looks good, on, good the, on the on the handsome on the handsome one. one. Yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think you you I think you can work it. No, I can. I think it's all about attitude. Yeah. Of course, maybe having a tan helps too. Yeah. I tried. I think it was in the eighties. It was that was like a fashion color. I remember we had those um, like orange or mustard yellow mm. college. So yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> okay, I can't take my pants off because <laughs> we're in a public. We're in a public space, even though we are in an enclosed room. But uh, it doesn't feel so enclosed because there are people walking by. Yeah. And PJ just walked by. Yeah. And just outside the window, there's like a, loads of champagne. Mm. I don't know what's going on out there. Yeah, there's a lot of champagne there. Mm, it's like. Uh, <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but no, I'm taking my shoes off because I. It's weird doing a sit and knit for a bit wearing shoes. Yeah. I mean, I've done sit and knits for a bit where I wore pants, yeah. but I've never done one with shoes on. So I just, if, oh, this feels so liberating. <laughs> and, yeah, and maybe you, you know, if you come from, if you, if you have learned a little bit about Scandinavian customs in the past, you'll know that, um, that in uh, Scandinavia you, you take your shoes off when you're indoors, uh, if you're in a private home. Um, and we're not. Um, we take our shoes off in the room. I think we have room. a lot in common with Japan when it comes to that. Because yeah. You have to take your shoes off. Of them. But normally people don't have a lot of slippers for their guests, mm. like they have in Japan. But you take your shoes off yeah. normally. And who said who said that? Like, was it in the Netherlands? 
Yeah, apparently, yeah, somebody, off. and we never thought about that. I mean, for us in Scandinavia, you, you know, you take your shoes off to be respectful of somebody's home. You don't want to bring the dirt in, and you want to, you know, you want to, by taking your shoes off in the, in the entry hall, you're kind of showing, showing that you acknowledge that somebody has worked very hard to keep the house clean, mm -hmm. and you don't, want to, you don't want to go in and make a mess. And somebody from Holland said to us that in Holland, if you take your shoes off, and uh, people might think you're getting a little too comfortable. Yeah. It's like you're moving in. Yeah, or you're it's like... Uh, too, you're like a housewarm? Yeah, you're anything? getting a little bit too comfortable in someone else's home. And I found that actually quite interesting yeah. to consider Never the fact that, that. that something that we would do, um, you know, that, that we consider would be very considerate and mm. very polite, maybe may be uh, perceived as not if you, in another if you go to another country. Yeah. But a lot of Asian um, countries, this is what Thailand, um, Indonesia, um, they take their shoes off, yeah. um, just like we do here in mm. Korea. So, so we, have, we have that in common with them. Yeah. And, uh, and, and now I took my shoes off. Um, <laughs> I'm not taking my pants off though, I promise. No, don't do that. Um, although, yeah, I will eventually when we get to the room and put my long johns on. Yeah. Not now. Yeah. So, so yeah. What else happened, Carl? Uh, oh yeah, we had a, a little something in the post. Uh, that's how we kind of live now. Um, you know, Trondheim is, as we said, um, there's no cases here, so it's green and people go about their life um, normally. If you go to Oslo, um, everything's closed. Mm. And they still have a lot of problem with the virus, and they have this click. You, know, you can do online. Uh, you know, you can click and do your online shopping, and then you can either collect it or you can get it delivered. And we're kind of, I don't know, we're six hours from Trondheim by car. We're two and a half hours from Oslo by car. So we're kind of, we're not in the middle, but we are somewhere else and, and it's remote and we don't have cases either where mm -hmm. we live. Um, but, you know, we do rely a lot on the click and shop because we don't, um, we don't go out much these days and we don't go into shops. So we've been getting a lot of stuff in the post um, every day, and it's so much that we even forget. Suddenly mm -hmm. you get a package, it's like, ooh, did I order this? And then you open it, it's like, hmm, when did I buy this? <laughs> Has that happened to you recently? Yeah. yeah sometimes. And then we got this, uh, we, you know, we had to sign uh, for something from the UK, and we're like, oh, I don't remember, I don't remember shopping anything in the UK recently. Uh, but it turned out it was the Rowan. It wasn't shopping. It wasn't, because this was a gift from Rowan. They sent it to us, um, and it's the latest Rowan magazine. And there's With, something special about the yeah, cover. It's very special for us. Hmm. It's our design on the cover. We have the cover, cover, girls. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, so, one of our designs is on the cover of the Rowan magazine, which we thought was quite fun and delightful. Um, and yeah, I have, uh, I have a lot of fun memories of this uh, Mm. the work that went into this magazine because we actually pitched Rowan because all the designers who are in their magazines have to pitch the ideas and some of them they say yes and some of them they say no mm. and um, the pitch for this Rowan magazine was done in the UK and we were there and that was the last time we went on a trip that's true yeah that was actually before we went on yeah. the cruise, that was in St Albans. We were yeah. gonna do uh, we were gonna do the appearance at the Rowan uh, Global Flagship yeah. Store. We had uh, and we had meetings with the Rowan team, um, and we were there for the selection. Usually, they like having designers in the selection. Um, so it's not only us, but there's other designers there. At that time, it was only us, though. Yeah. It was like that's over one year. Yeah. And yeah, and what happened was we ended up uh, with a cover. The story is really nice. Um, let me see if I can open this up and show you guys. It's, it's, it's the yeah. 50s, that's like the inspiration. So there's a the whole story. story, there's a whole story in the magazine that, um, as it says here, nostalgic style. It's the revisit, revisits those golden moments of the 1950s, adding a playful modern twist to the vintage fashion trends. Now that is something that, you know, if you say 50s to me, I'm there. <laughs> Anytime. It's my favorite, uh, one of my favorite decades it of clothing. It was a clothing. very stylish decade. Yeah, it is a beautiful decade for clothing. Um, and there's a lot of fantastic movies as well um, that are great yeah. um, um, from the 50s that have, you know, and you have those beautiful um, 
kind of fitted dresses with big skirts. Mm. Um, the gentlemen, the gentlemen wear hats. Uh, it's a very stylish uh, time. High heels. Mm. Um, nice. It's very nice. Yeah, nice and time. We usually say that those decades back then, like the ten, the ten, yeah, the tens, the twenties, the thirties, the forties, the nineteen twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, is a time when people did a lot of experimenting with uh, mm. in fashion, and and they kind of invented a lot of new things. Which we're super excited. Yeah. Nowadays, you can't invent anything anymore because it's all been done. Yeah, here's a lovely that's, picture. That's very nice. From They've been the in the English garden. Yep. Maybe before we end the set on it today, we should take like film a little bit in the magazine so you can see the pictures. Yeah, we could do that. So we have like a very different set on it for a bit since yeah. we are sure. out so, and about. So you mean that we shouldn't show people oh, the we designs? Could, you, could, you, could, you could show it. But it's nice to like. What you call that? The bra, you know? Yeah, flick through. Flick but through the. Magazine. Isn't that what we're doing now? Are we doing it now? Well, we can do it if you want. It's okay with me. I want to do something new. Now. Yeah. So these are also. This is also one of our designs. Um, and there are a lot of nice designs. Yeah, I want to show my favorite one that we did for this magazine. It's actually. Um, Which one? Is I your think favorite? this is your favorite. This is my favorite. Yeah. These are like. Bows. It's a very cute bolero and it's got bows. It's really cute. I think it came out really nice because it looks like it's a lace fabric. When yeah. You, like when you see it at first. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah. That's Wolf, your, is that yeah, your favorite? That's, uh, that's mine. I wish the picture would have been bigger. <laughs> so typical. You can't always get what you want. Yeah, wearing. but to me it was the best one. Yeah, I love this cardigan that he's, the model is wearing. It's in. Um, it's a color block cardigan in different colors. It's done in cotton, and I think it's really nice. So it's yeah. It's this the men's cardigan I'm talking about, in white, blue, and green and black. It's really cool. Yeah, and then there's a story. There's a whole. Um, <clears throat> there's a whole piece here as well. This one is, is ours. Now we have actually flicked through the magazine. Yeah, I think. <laughs> this is ours as well. So, flick or no flick? I think we have flicked now. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just try to do new things, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, It's yeah. like when I do coffee, I try to do it in a new way every mm. morning. Yeah, and then there's this piece about, uh, it's called The Sweater Girls, and it's probably uh, about vintage. Mm. About, yeah, it's definitely vintage sweaters and vintage style. Um, yeah. Bullet bars and wasp waist shape the mid-century decade of knits. So, yeah, the knits were kind of very More cropped fitted. and yeah. fitted and the waist was kind of visible so this was the one of the highlights for the last week when yeah we got the magazine in the post yeah so that's really nice and it's always so. nice because we work uh, we work so far in advance the rowan magazine um we pitched the Ro rowan magazine probably in december mm. and then um or, or or january and then we were in in, in the uk in the end of January, no, sorry, in February. We were there in the end of February to do the selection together with the Rowan team, which is fun. It's the first time we've done the selection. Mm -hmm. And then from February until the magazine came out on, um, I think it came out on April 1st. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just very recent. It's just like three weeks ago. Um, yeah, and then when you see the designs for the first time, that's always a very special feeling. Yeah. Um, I, I like calling it to rediscover yeah, a collection because, because you, um, yeah, you can say. Yeah, it. like when you make the drawings, and it's almost like amazing to see how it works, if it works when, when people, when they knit it. So I think that's part yeah. of it. That's really funny. It's part of the fun. So yeah, another thing is seeing the sketch, which is flat. Yeah. Usually we'll do like a flat sketch, we'll do a swatch, and we've designed the, the, the piece in our head. And uh, and then the first time we see it is actually when they create it. So mm. so from the time we design it until the time we see it, it can be I don't know. It can be months. Yeah. A long time. It's really time. fun to see when it comes alive. Yeah. See your design become a three D. Yeah. I like and, that. Um, and see that you were your vision. You know how is my vision? How has it come to life? Mm. And um, one of the um, the most important jobs of a knitwear designer is to convey the 
the design to the people who are making it. So none of the Rowan designers make their own SWAT or, 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 or samples. The, those are made by the, by the technical team at Rowan. The Rowan pattern writers do the pattern mm. writing. So all of the designers that work with Rowan, you've got Kay Fassett and you've got um, Martin Story, Lisa Richardson, Erica Knight, um, Georgia Farrell, mm. uh, um, what are they called? The uh, Qua uh, Quail Studios. Yeah. They will never really see um, their vision until the designs are knitted. And but they you don't have time to knit either. Like if you work as a designer, it, yeah. it takes a lot of time just doing the design work. So yeah, but you, you see, also, also, we're, uh, also, being a designer and being a knitter is not really the same thing. No. I mean, you can be you can be a knitter and a designer, and you can uh, design because you knit. But but in terms of working professionally, the way we have been working for for twenty years, and the way Martin and Lisa and and, and um, mm. Georgia work, um, we're working with ideas, and we're conveying those ideas onto someone else, and. And they are interpreting our designs, mm. and our. I think that's one of the most important things of, of our work is is to deliver it in a way where what we thought is is what we get yeah. afterwards, that's and true. and that is a special skill that is um, that is quite hard. I mean, sometimes we see something and we say, "Hmm, wasn't quite what we wanted," and then mm -hmm. we will have to ask them to change or tweak or mm. or do something. Because that can happen. Oh, that happens all the time. So, because that's when you say kill your darlings. That's when you say kill your darlings. So you shouldn't hold tight to everything. Mm. It's necessarily not so nice in real. And sometimes they make a mistake. So you you write something and the knitter doesn't see it, and they make a mistake, and then they send it to you, and then it actually looks good. And yeah, you say, sometimes oh. that can be really good. Yeah. So <laughs> a mistake that actually improves the design. Yeah. That that can be that can be great. But yeah, it is it is uh, challenging working as designers, um, in the sense that. Um, we always have to be ahead of you guys uh, when it comes to trends. We have, you know, we imagine the things and then we get um, there's the people that mm. do it, uh, the technical teams and everything. And there's an explanation to that as well because Rowan uh, has their way of writing a pattern mm. and another yarn company will have their way of writing the pattern. So in order to keep that um, kind of you know, I think everything should uniformity, it has to be Rowan that does all the developing. We can't do I it. Think, but that's that can be different from a company to a company or from one culture or country yeah. to another country. So yeah, but what I mean is by, by working the way we work with Rowan, uh, a pattern designed by Georgia Farrell or a pattern designed by Kay Fassett or a pa pattern designed by Arne Carlos will have the same kind of words. The instructions yeah. will, be, will be written in a uniform way, so mm. that if you are a Rowan knitter, you will recognize the pattern and the way the pattern is written immediately, regardless of whether we designed it, regardless of if Kate designed it, and regardless of if how Georgia designed it mm. or Lisa or Martin. So it's it's um, it's just different different designers and different styles, but the same pattern writing. And f in order to achieve that for a company like Rowan, they have to do the work. Mm. And then when we work on our own designs. Uh, we get to, con I mean, like that are not published through Rowan, we can get to decide more mm. how we want to write it. So it's different. Yeah. Talking about Rowan, Carlos, we had this discussion this week, like, or we talked about having guests in our YouTube channel, like, if we should bring some of those people we talk about into the. Yeah. Room. It could be cool. Well, something yeah. is happening. Here. Yeah, there's excitement here in uh, Sydney for a bit today. Yeah, we, we will definitely consider that, um, thinking of other, uh, other people that we could uh, yeah. possibly work with. It would be with. nice if we could have guests. So we'll see in the future. Maybe we'll have guests. You maybe, know what I think? Maybe we should wrap up. Yeah, I, I think, think our 15 minutes are up. I think we have used... People are looking and smiling. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, our, our 15 minutes are definitely up. <laughs> at least up. we gave you a different sit on it this time, but next yeah. time we will be... Are you blushing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because of the people there? Hello. No, there was like a gang of people. Or because of uh, because of the hotel staff? No, there was some people watching. Yeah, yeah, smoke. yeah. There's a window, so what you can't see is there's a window there. There's some curtains, and the curtains are up. So actually, they're serving themselves champagne, I think. And yeah, I know. And we're you know what? We're in the wrong side of the door. <laughs> That's for <laughs> we sure. We should be out there. We should the be out there. But you know what? Maybe we can open the door and just reach our hand out. Who knows? 
No, I think we should wrap it up, Carl. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely we're so going to wrap it up. Next time we will be at home. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, our 15 minutes are definitely up. Um, yeah. And we hope you've enjoyed uh, this video. Um, we do have time to do the formalities very quickly. Yeah, if you like the videos, thumbs up. And uh, if you subscribe, put on your notifications because then you will have this ring. The bling, yeah. Every time there's a new video out and you won't miss the episode. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time. Remember, there's great patterns uh, on our website. Uh, we've got the lovely uh, crochet blanket that is coming soon. And uh, yeah, if you haven't gotten the Rowan magazine, go get it, because there's loads of fun designs there. And many of them are done by us. You think that champagne is free? Uh, I don't know. We'll s <laughs> probably not. <laughs> thank you so much for watching, and see you again uh, next week at the usual and normal familiar location at home. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you.